Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on EMC consideration. Our topic for discussion for today is understand what is shielding for EMC. Today will be the part 19 series. The early on series discussion on EMC, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to know more about EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by pressing the subscribe and like button. Or if you have any suggest topic, please also send it to me. Thank you so much, guys. Firstly, let's define what is shielding. Shielding refer to a metallic enclosure, okay, which means that the covering must be a metallic that completely enclose the electronics. Okay, for example, you build certain device, you build a metallic enclosure, you need to ensure that it is completely enclosed. Okay, the purpose of shielding is to control the propagation of electric and magnetic field from one of the region to the other. Okay, so you see that this is one form of shielding. So the purpose of the shielding is to control either the electric or magnetic field from entering one region to another region. Okay, there are two purposes of a shield. So the two purposes of the shield is denoted as these two diagram here. First, okay, is to prevent the emission of the electronics of the product from radiate outside the boundary of the product in order to comply with the emission limit. So for example, I built an electronic product. So the shielding is to prevent the emission to radiate out from one region to another region. Next, to prevent radiate emission external to the product from coupling to the product electronics, which may cause interference in the product. Okay, so for example, this is the electronic product that you have designed. Okay, what you worry is external factor, such as a base station, okay, they may emit out electromagnetic wave and disturb your duty. So therefore, you build a shielding to protect your device here. Next, from an overall system point of view, the shielding the noise source is definitely more effective than shielding the resistance. Okay, which means that you know where is the noise source. So you actually shield where the noise source is. It, it is definitely much more effective then you concentrate to shield on the receiver. Okay, it is of very little value okay, to make a shield, and then we allow this electromagnetic energy to enter or leave the enclosure by an alternative path, okay, such as aperture or seams. Okay, you know that it is always very challenged to have a 100% shield. So some of the time, we actually open up some opening Okay, to ensure, for example, ventilation or in fact also connect from one device to another device. So therefore, it is almost quite difficult to have a 100% enclosure. Later on, I'm going to share to you how to design the aperture or seam so that the opening with minimum effect of leaking. Okay, so shooting is often a very expensive and difficult to implement. Okay. The decision, okay, because of many factors, okay, for example, you need to do certain tooling. Okay, for example, this is a tooling that you need okay, to enclose the enclosure over here. So this may be very challenging, additional amount of cost incurred. And what we want to do is we want to work against it as best as possible to avoid the shielding. But if we cannot do any avoid, okay, then a decision whether or not to shield okay, should be taken as early as possible in the project. Okay, normally, experience and rough calculation of magnitude of the view generated by the PCB track and compare them to the desired emission limit 
okay, this will roughly tell us whether shielding is essential and all. So with some experience, okay, and then earlier on, I have shared with you how to do the calculation also. Okay, so you do a very quick calculation and compare against certain standard that you want to compliant. Okay, you will be able to tell whether shielding, whether is it a must or not. Shielding does not itself affect common mode coupling. Okay, which means that shielding basically is not very effective against common mode coupling. And if this is the expected to be the dominant coupling, okay, a full shield may not be necessary. Okay, so as what it suggests, okay, if you have a common mode coupling, okay, there's very little effect on shielding. And if this common mode coupling is a dominant factor, hence a full shield okay, may not be really necessary. Okay, it does establish a clean reference for decoupling common mode current too, okay, but it is also possible to do this with a large area ground plate if the layout is planned carefully. The shielding of electromagnetic wave is a combination of reflection due to mismatch of wave impedance at a metal barrier and also absorption as wave penetrate through the barrier. Okay, so this picture here shows the absorption. So the electromagnetic wave penetrate through the conductive material and the electromagnetic wave is basically absorbed and lesser amount will be able to leave this metallic enclosure. Okay, so this is reflection okay, because of the mismatch. Okay, basically, some of the signal actually reflected back Okay, so these are the two methods. Okay, in fact, there is another one which, which is called multiple reflection, which I'm going to explain later. Okay, how are we going to know the shielding effectiveness? Okay, a common starting point in the quantified comparison of shielding and close is to define the shielding effectiveness as shown in the diagram here. Okay, so how can we define the shielding effectiveness? Firstly, okay, so this is the point that you actually measure. This is your source or your noise source. Okay, so what you measure over here, the either the magnetic field or the electric field, so you denote as H0 or E0. Okay, so you have the magnetic strength of magnetic field and electric strength of field. So what happens next is you put a shield. Okay, again, you measure at exactly the same distance from the radiate source. Okay, so you measure the magnetic field and also the electric field. So now you denote them as H1 or E1. So in terms of the shielding effectiveness, okay, let's say for this case for electric field, okay, you're going to compare okay, E0 that is without any shielding and E1 with shielding. And this 20 log E0 over E1 will be able to tell you the shielding effectiveness against electric field. Same for magnetic field. This is without any shielding. This is with shielding. So when, once you do this 20 log H0 over H1, you actually compare the shielding effectiveness. So with this, you can know how effective is your shielding against magnetic field. Okay, the shielding effectiveness depends on many factors. So firstly, the type of material that you're going to use, the type of field, which means that is it E field or H field? The distance from the source and receiving antenna. So you can imagine the further you are, okay, most likely you are receiving a weaker signal. So this is also a very important criteria. Okay, the nature of any discontinuity in a shield. So like what I mentioned, any opening, etc. So this actually determine the overall effect of the shielding. With this, I like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.